Apart from that, it's attached to a CH3. Now, even in this case, even in this case, uh, uh, there is no there is no problem of high, uh, there is no problem of any more, forming any more bonds because we are done with the total number of bonds. But if you see, we have we have fulfilled the condition of five carbon atoms. That is fine. We have fulfilled the conditions of one oxygen atom. But let's count the number of hydrogen atoms. One, two, three, four. 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 1 8, then 9, and then 10. So this becomes C5H10O. However, we need C5H8O. So this cannot be a primary alcohol. So we have deduced that it is not a primary alcohol. Now let's try the aldehyde. So we know that if it's not a primary alcohol, it has to be an aldehyde. But let's just check that if we are absolutely correct. If whatever we have done till now is absolutely correct. So again, let's take this as CH because we have to make a chiral center and this as CH3 and now instead of an alcohol, we have an aldehyde. So this becomes a CHO. Let's count the total number of atoms now. So carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Carbon is correct. Oxygen 1, oxygen is correct. Hydrogens 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 plus 3, 7, 7 plus 1, 8. Now we have 8 hydrogens. So we have fulfilled the condition. This is so and I'm making a star over here because this is the chiral center. You can see this is chiral because it's attached to an aldehyde group. It's attached to a methyl group CH3. It's, a, it's attached to a hydrogen and then it's attached to this group. So it's attached to four different groups. So it can be called the chiral center. So we have fulfilled the condition of chiral center. We have fulfilled the condition of an alkene because we have the alkene group. This that we can, you can see that this does not show cis trans isomerism because one of the double bonded carbons has two identical groups attached to it, so it does not show cis trans isomerism. And when you will heat this in the presence of, uh, you will, when you heat this under reflux in the presence of acidified potassium dichromate, this will oxidize to form a carboxylic acid. So we have fulfilled all the conditions now, so we can, with confidence, we can say that this is compound U. And this is exactly how we deduce infrared spectra. Let's move forward to the next question now. A student analyzed CH3, CH2 whole thrice, CO2H. So CH3, CH2 whole, whole thrice, CO2H. This was one of the compounds he analyzed. Then and uh, methanol and V. So we do not know what compound V is. But we know methanol. Methanol is CH3OH. This is methanol. Uh, using in, and, and some random compound V. We do not know what compound V is. Using infrared spectroscopy, the spectra were returned to the student without labels. Okay, So we know that he analyzed them differently in, individually using infrared spectroscopy. So he got three different spectra which they have said are X, Y and Z. Now we do not know which spectra X is, which spectra Y is and which spectra Z is. Uh, but we know that uh, we will assign these spectra, we have to assign these spectra to, to uh, this is 1 carbon, uh, 1 and 3 is 4, 4, 5 carbon. So this is pentanoic acid. So we have to assign these spectra to pentanoic acid, methanol and this compound V. Okay. So explain your answer with reference to relevant features of the three spectra in the region above 1500 per centimeter. Now we have infrared spectrum X. So if you look at spectrum X, uh, we have and they have said above 1500 per centimeter, which means we make a line over here. We have to ignore this region. We do not do anything about this region. And the only thing we have to look at is above 1500, which is this region that I'm circling right now. So we see distinctly we see two peaks in this region one is this peak let's label this one and the other is this peak let's label this two so we have two distinct peaks in this region now let's assign bonds to these peaks so the the first peak peak one is in the range 1600 to 1700 and when i look at this on my infrared spectrum this is this carbon oxygen double bond so I know that uh, the infrared spectrum X is for a carbon oxygen double bond and uh, three and so and this is this is a very this is a very sharp not a broad this is a very sharp and it is mildly strong like I won't say it's a completely strong peak but it's 
because it's above than 50 in transmittance or absorption it will be, it will be a strong peak but it's mildly strong and 